What is going on everyone? Thank you all so much for tuning back in. It really means a lot to me that you guys do keep tuning on back for these recaps and let's just jump straight into another one. So as you guys can tell from the thumbnail, another red day, pretty decent red day. I, I'm, I've been using 5k all week to trade so down around 2% on the day again and yeah, I'm not gonna lie, past three days it has been a little beating, right? Not ideal at all. It's today I was down ninety eight dollars and ninety nine cents, and I only traded SQs. And if any of you saw the Nasdaq, like I just had pulled up, obviously not the right day to trade SQs. Today was a TQs day, given um with just how bullish the Nasdaq was today, right? It did keep making these continuous higher highs and higher lows, and the whole way through. Um, until market closed, it just did a beautiful job of, of making these continuous higher highs, right? Just uh, today, yeah, I had a, a pretty decent size recovery for TQs. If you did get invested in that, and if you did, congrats. But just to go back to my trades, just to remind you guys, so here's six orders, six fills, but three of those are buys, three of those are sells. So I took three trades today. And the green ones are where I bought, the red ones are where I sold, and here is the exact pricing of where. And I'm going to walk through with you guys a little more um, in detail on that. But obviously, just from what I can take from this week so far, I'm already down a pretty significant amount, right? I'm down like $320 on the week. And that's definitely already enough for me to want to not put my uh, capital at any more risk for the week. So... I'm thinking that tomorrow and Friday, I'm very likely going to paper trade. And if I do end up trading real money, it's just going to be a much smaller dollar amount than even $5,000. But um, yeah, something I just want to take note of is obviously I told you guys I was trying something different this week. I I'm, I was trying to send my full position at places I thought the NASDAQ looked too overbought. Like let's say I choose position towards the top VWAP or oversold. Anytime the NASDAQ recently has... Um, sold off to near this bottom view up here it has tended to try and bounce off it like it did right around here at three o'clock in the morning and yeah so I, I don't like averaging up at all I feel like I always find myself screwing up more when I have to average up and yeah I want to try something different but it's clearly not the call at all because my accuracy has been just absolute garbage right every single day I've traded I think I've had all red trades and on top of that, yeah, they've just been piling up, obviously, down $320. That's already over 6% on the week. And although I, I did use a strategy last week and the week before, and I was green, um, my accuracy definitely is not there. It's, you know, I can't have such a horrible accuracy because uh, even with the right risk-reward ratios, if the accuracy is, is not there, then obviously there's not going to be any profit. So, yeah, I, I need to... The importance of what I found this week so far has been that the strategy, like, you definitely need to find a way to average up if possible because it's going to save these huge red weeks, right? Let's say I continue the same strategy tomorrow on Friday and was red. I would be down so much, right? Potentially over $500, and that is not a good strategy to be using. I need something that is going to help me manage my risk a lot better. So I, I'm, I feel it's definitely my best interest to try to um average up again you know get in with a smaller position size originally and only when it starts going my way average to average up but i do need to work on when i'm going to average up so because i really do find value in in only getting in with let's say a fraction of your position size you plan to be in with fully but like you know at the start when you're not so sure it's smart to to not be in fully invested, right? Because it just helps you man, uh, minimize your risk that much better on the day. So given that, I want to walk through with you guys my trades on the day and kind of my thought process and how I got burned today. So if you look at my first trade at 7.33 in the morning. So at 6.30 in the morning, like I always show you guys, this is when the NASDAQ opened up for a lot of people. And if I can zoom in for a little for you guys right here. So right around here was at 6.30 in the morning and leading into the pre-market or leading into the market open, sorry, I always say that, it, during the pre-market hours, right, leading into 6.30 a.m. when the market actually opened up, the NASDAQ was giving signs that it was starting to uptrend, right? It was trending above this middle VWAP and the top VWAP. And anytime it's 
um, past the middle B wap it has just it's an indication that it could try and rally a bit like it previously did here earlier in the morning in the pre-market hours so going into the market open it ends up doing that again but I really wanted to just be cautious because given how bearish the market's been like I've been showing you guys anytime the market has rallied anytime it approaches its top VWAP area it does tend to want to sell off after right just like even this was on the 26th this was two days ago even though the Nasdaq did push up uh, pretty aggressively right around here ultimately got rejected off the top VWAP and ended up coming all the way back down so today was definitely um, something like that although it looks like that in the end right now I want to go over with you guys kind of why I also do get faked out and think this strategy may not be the best and let me just go ahead and share that with you guys but as you guys can see when I took my first position let me show you guys at 7.33 in the morning the reason I took it is right around here is 7.33 in the morning I took it because it was approaching top VWAP and as you guys can see do you guys see the top VWAP line, how it's starting to curl up and basically raise itself? The flaw with trying to always predict to to basically just simplify my trading like this and anytime it approaches the top VWAP to send a play for SQs, let's say. The thing that's been wrong with that that I've been noticing is that as the NASDAQ does start to want to push up, the, the top VWAP will start to curl up. It's not going to stay at the same spot it's been. So let's say right around here when I bought in at 7.33 in the morning, it was near the top VWAP. As you can see later on in the day, the same area I'm trying to hold right there, where I bought in at 7.33 in the morning, towards the end of the day, it is nowhere near the top VWAP. So this top VWAP is going to basically move in the direction that the NASDAQ wants to move and it will also raise itself if the NASDAQ keeps pushing. So just given knowing that, obviously it's a lot harder to kind of predict the, um, where the top VWAP is actually going to be, right? Because the NASDAQ could have kept aggressively pushing up and the top VWAP would have started to curl up. So it's always very easy at the end of the day in hindsight looking at, you know, how the top VWAP kept pushing up and the NASDAQ kept kind of trying to get rejected off, off it anytime it went up. But... You guys have to take into consideration what I just told you. And yeah, the top VWAP will just start elevating itself. So you never really know where the top is. So that's just something to look out for and something I've definitely noticed on why the strategy may not be the best to use because you never really know where the resistance area is going to be if it keeps moving up with the NASDAQ. So yeah, I wanted to point that out today, but at 7.33 in the morning, I decided to take my first trade, but obviously, as you can tell, it, it did start going my way a little, but ultimately made a higher high, pushed above the top view up where it was trading before, this potential resistance area where it fell before, and once I saw a break above, I ended up cutting my loss, and that one wasn't so big at the start. My first loss was around $37, if I remember right, but then I took another trade at 8.06 in the morning. And let me just zoom in a little more for you guys. So 8.06 in the morning is basically right around here. After I saw that it wanted to follow the NASDAQ and try and pick up again, I ultimately took another position. I sent one because it was near the top view up and I saw it didn't really want to rally anything crazy. It did try and fall a little bit, but ultimately did. Um, it this ultimately did flush me out too because it ended up coming up here and flushing me out breaking above the top view up so and one more thing I do want to let you guys know about is my last trade on 8.23 in the morning so right around here was when I decided to take it and the reason for that was because I just wanted to really make sure that my trade wasn't if it went south it wasn't gonna um basically I was fine taking one more trade once I saw it and you really push up again above the top view up. I wanted to try one more trade in case it did end up having a nice and decent sell off again, like it has been having the past few days, right? Anytime it's approached the top view up, it's had a nice fake out and sold off a lot. But unfortunately, even though it did start going my way, I really thought we were going to get it. It didn't want to hold these higher highs and higher lows. As you can see here, 
it did start falling, but the lows it had was even higher than it previously did. And it kept validating that pattern, ultimately flushing me out. So yeah, that's basically what my thought process was. I kept trying to catch a play on SQs I thought was going to come, but it never ended up coming. And just noticing how the top VWAP is shifting is, like I said, a big key factor why I think the strategy is pretty flawed and I'm going to have to look into managing my risk better because already down over 6%, more like 6.5 on the week. Yeah, that's definitely not pretty. And yeah, just I hope this can be kind of a an example for you guys that you don't even have to go through. If any of you were thinking of sending plays like that, this is definitely why it can go south and you wouldn't want to do something like that. So yeah, I just want to keep that in mind. Yesterday, the market did sell off a little in after hours because Apple, as you can see, it did tank because they released news saying that they were going to basically size down their production and everything like that. And that's definitely not the best news, right? When a company wants to downsize or something like that. So slowing production isn't anything good and the market did tank with it. So that is also a little reason why I thought we might have more of a bearish sentiment today in the market because of the bad news. But today the Nasdaq did do a great job, obviously, of recovering even without Apple, right? It didn't need Apple. Did a great job of validating these higher highs and higher lows. And as you guys can see, Right, nice little rally off of these lows it almost hit on the 180 day. It was just approaching more oversold territory, so maybe it's not going to be the biggest shocker if the next few days we do start seeing some type of um, plays for the upside for TQs until we get a little more kind of towards the overbought area, right? But overall, it's still a um, descending pattern, long, uh, big picture, right? Still making lower highs and lower lows, but yeah, we are approaching near lows for the 180 days and this might be an indication that the Nasdaq is going to try and basically um, validate this uh, this oversold area and try and push up a bit. So yeah, thank you guys all so much for tuning back in. It's been another recap. I've enjoyed making this video for you and I really hope that you guys did learn something. And yeah, thank you guys all so much for tuning back in and I'll see you guys all tomorrow and Friday. Take care.